What's going on? I'm Christian Warford. This is Ball from Assembly Hall, episode eight. I'm proud to tell you all that we that we're Underdog Sports' newest partner. On top of that, I got even better news. They are currently running a promo for all new u- users. The easiest way for you is to get in on this special is by downloading their app and using my code BFAH24. Even if you've already registered but still haven't deposited, you can still use the promo. What are you waiting for? Get started today. Come play along with me all season long at Underdog Sports. What's going on, baby? We back. Another another episode, Ball from Assembly Hall. I'm your host, Christian Warford, with my co-host, Derek Elston. Got another show for you guys today, man. Got some more stuff to talk about. Got a lot of interaction from the last show, which was good. Uh, you know, there was some negative stuff and some positive stuff, but mainly positive. We wanted to, um, you know, keep it positive and stuff like that. But anyway, Derek, tell me what's going on, man. Tell me, you feeling good? How you feeling? Man, I don't know. See, I, I mean, we're just... <laughs> Talking ball, baby. I don't feel good at all. No, nah, I'm just talking about. I'm just talking about. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm just talking about everyday life right now. Is it getting Man. better for you? You told me it was turning the curve a little bit. With your I thought one. we were. For some reason, this girl is a. Uh, she's allergic <laughs> to her bed. Um, before you got. I mean, this is real life, man. I come home. We're we're uh, we're potty training Parker. I got pee all over the floor as soon as I walk in because she wants to pee on the floor. Doesn't have her underwear on. I got a I got a daughter who's allergic to her bed. Oh it's my just, god! That's not I'm miserable. sure I'm sure li- I'm you. sure listeners either have been through what I'm going through, or are getting ready to venture down this path. And by no means don't do listen I think to Derek, y'all. Don't fun. listen to Derek. It's not that bad. He makes it's it not that like bad. This. It's it, it's extremely it fun, fun. But you don't okay. know what you're walking into every day. Every right. day. No doubt. <laughs> But yeah, Derek, man, I just came back from, I hate to tell you, man, but I just came back from a great place, bro, in L.A. for four days. Got a chance to sit courtside. Got a, got a chance to see Braun, you know, courtside. Shit was crazy, bro. I ain't going to lie. Right. This shit was this shit was dope, man. And, you know, to watch my brother who playing on that stage, man, was cool, bro. So we had a good time out there, man. But, you know, back at the crib now, bro, for a little minute. But back other than reality. that, man, back, back to reality, baby. Back to the kiddos, you know, back to the crying, you know. I, I escaped I it for four days though, so I was good, bro. You know how they go. That's that's lovely. Any, anytime, I, I anytime you get that myself. little break. Yeah, you right. But man, we got a jam packed schedule today, bro. Let's just jump right into it, man. I mean, a lot of this gonna be on the um, the Wisconsin game. Um, you know, got a lot of stuff to talk about, bro. Got a lot of sound bites. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are talking about you know about the program right now. I don't know. It's just a hot yeah. topic right now. But just tell me what you thought about the Wisconsin game, man. I didn't have a chance to watch it live, but I did go back and rewatch it, man. And I, you know, I get my analysis on it. But you just tell me what you thought about it. Yeah, I mean, see, to be honest with you, before the game, I was telling everybody that I thought Indiana win this game. Um, really? Uh, yeah, Khalil Ware being a late scratch uh, obviously killed us. Uh, it did. But I thought we matched up really, really well. I know they got a good guard set right there, um, but I thought we had a crew that could at least you know, take a couple of those blows. It's almost like right now you feel like if the train hasn't fallen off the tracks, it's, it's tipping over and it's almost there. Like you go into these games, like uh, again, like I thought we matched up really, really well. They got two bigs. We've got two bigs who can shoot. They've got two bigs that can shoot. They have a really good transfer. We got Mbako. Like, yeah. Chucky, maybe. I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of torn, like Derek. You know, I, I've been trying to figure out this team, bro. I can't really tell which 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 way we coming or whether we going, man. But I mean, you know, when we when we started the season, you look at our personnel and stuff. You think we, you know, we we think we checked a lot of boxes, bro. But I just don't yeah. really see any type, you know, um, leadership out there right now. Like as far as you know, somebody that's gonna rally the troops. I think, you know, X is a little bit in his head about just how he's playing. I know he was supposed to be our guy that really rattled the truth, but well, we ain't really got nobody that's really leading right now that I really yeah. see. That's yeah. just really just jumping out there. And, t- and I don't know if that's just, you know, we can say that's the player, that's on the player's fault, but I mean, bro, the, the coaching staff, you know, they you, you got a, you got a chance every year to get better in the portal. Guys are jumping around. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't think we brought in the right personnel right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're, we're 19 games in, 
we are who we are at this point there. Like I don't really I don't really see too much changing, you know, honestly. Like no, I don't yeah. I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to put that on just all all on the coach. I don't want to put it all on the players and I, I don't want to put it all on the coaches either. I think it's just a mixture of what we have on the floor right now. Yeah, it's I mean every especially now just because of what's happened with our team, um whether it be Xavier Johnson, now CJ Gunn, uh um, right. You know, our biggest thing right now and a lot of people's, you know, we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of, uh, you know, touches with the fans when we put out our last video. Uh, right. Obviously, uh, Brian Evans quote had a lot to do with that. But um, when you listen to what Brian said in that in that full that full podcast that he did with JMV and then he spoke about it a, a few days after, he's right in saying that, like, you're three years in. And you're 19 games in, and when when Coach Woody goes out on you know his whatever post game show or or you know Monday nights with with Don Fisher, and he's talking about like I don't really know this team yet. Yeah, and I don't, kind you know, don't quote me on that, but like it's around the those oh, similar around there. I mean, I, yeah. what he said about Mbako was was kind of mind blowing to me. Like you know, he said the kid kind of came to us late and. You know, we didn't really know much about him, and it's just kind of strange to me. Like, you know, I don't know. It don't take me less, much, take me long to really know somebody. You know, once you, right. once he's on the board, like you really know who he is. I mean, you 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 go meet the kid. It's just like you know, I don't feel like you have to recruit a kid for three, four years before you actually really know who they right. are as a player. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was a little. I don't know, man. I've been scratching my head trying to figure out, um, you know, what's really going on. He was really going through breaking down every player. Pretty much, basically, and that was my analysis I got of, yeah. of the Baco of the, you yeah. know what we what yeah. we got with him. And and you know, a lot to do with what Brian had said. I put a tweet out there that said like when certain guys talk, like you pay attention to what they're saying. And I think Brian is one of those guys, uh, just because of what he did at IU in his five years, like mm -hmm. all American. Like the dude was real. And, and you know, in this game, we got a sound bite too from from Don Fisher. And the one thing about Don that I think everybody understands is no matter what, if you, he's been there for 51 years, if you come on, man, turn this, if you turn the sound off and just listen to Don, you understand that he is very level headed and understands that like, yes, you're not going to go out there and win every game. Uh, right. But he has been around the program, obviously long enough to see like what's Indiana basketball and what's not. And right. for him to say, that he is disappointed in this team, not because of the score, but because of what this team is showing on a nightly basis on national TV. Um, right. it, it's very disheartening. And, and when Don Fisher says that, you're like, yeah, it, oh, it makes mean. Yeah, and I think I, I listened to, his, to him on the radio and he came out and said, you know, he shouldn't have worded it that way. But still what he was saying, I understood what he was saying, you know, yeah. just because of when it happened, um, you know, a constant level of, you know, immature plays that we've been making over the over the last couple of games just show a, a lack of leadership, a lack of discipline, a lack of everything that you know. I'm saying that Indiana stands for that. When you put on those candy stripes and what it what it represents, it's just you know people that really you know been here so long and really put that jersey on and understand like what it means, man. It's such an insult when stuff like that continues to happen. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel for you know CJ Gunn. I know he he he's not thinking about it that way. He's in the moment. Right. Yeah. Right, you know, what I'm saying? but right. like it's just a, it's just a testament of like what's going on. Like, and I and I and I don't want to say we, we're we're not a disciplined team, but right now we're a very immature team, bro. We make yeah. very immature mistakes, bro. Like, no, see, I th I think you make a good point, and and I think that's why the fan base right now is is so frustrated because you had an opportunity where Xavier Johnson has made this mistake time and time again, and you're a coach that's new to college basketball and you know, from day one, you hear all the time. I mean, look at Strewsbury over at Notre Dame. Like they, mm. I, I, I can't remember who they just took a bad beat to a couple of weeks ago. I but remember, they but lost that. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they lost at home and Shrewsbury said like, I'm building a culture here. And if you're not a part of it, I don't care. You can get off my bench. You can get out of my stadium. Like, and he's saying that about his players. And so right. I think that that's the hard part for a lot of fans is the fact that like you're new, you, you've been in the NBA for so long. You, you, you just had a season where we came from the NCAA tournament. 
right. where we advanced, we won a game, and now you've got Khalil Ware with an improved um, Malik Renew. You've got Galloway coming back. Now you add a piece like Mbako. It's like, all right, we should see that again. And right, we should. The, the culture has just kind of slipped up, and and you know, for a kid to do something like that and not punish him, well, it, it just looks. It just looks like there's carryover, and that's why CJ Gunn did what he did. For sure, for sure, that's what it, that's what it appears to be, you know. And I don't want to say that. Like I said, I try not. To, I try not to jump into that, bro, just because I know, I know them coaches over there are probably pulling their Absolutely. hair out, bro. Absolutely. Trying to figure out what's going on, man. Just trying to, just trying to wrap. You know, you know, you think you got the right players, you think you got talented enough players to do it, and it just don't get done. I know it's just. Ultimately, I just know it's just. So frustrating for the coaches right now, man. And yeah. like we falling in the Ken Palm. I see we falling from ninety six to ninety nine. Definitely on the outside of the tournament looking in yeah. right now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we got we got Illinois coming up, another top ten, top ten team that got Terrence Shannon back is gonna be in the starting lineup, bro. So I just but the good thing I wanna say, the good thing about this uh, week is we do got eight games. We had eight, well, I think we got eight days off before we played again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, So you know, it gives us a little time to find our identity. It gives us a little time. I know coaches probably over there. You know, I can only imagine how tough these practices being over the over yeah. over, over the. You know what I'm saying? How tough it is. You're trying to find some identity. You're trying to find guys who really want to play, who who really gonna do it. You know, do what they do is do what you're told. Like you know, you want to find guys who's gonna play the right way. And I think that's what we this late in the season it, it hurts to say that we're we're trying to look for that right now. But that's where we at. Like. That, that is. You're right. That's a terrible feeling knowing that we've got, you know, I don't necessarily think we have a, a senior led team, obviously, but we do have guys who are old and have been in college basketball for a while. So a long time, Derek. A, you're, long, you're, for, for a long time, man. And I, mean, we come out, I don't know, bro. You come out and get that many, give up that many points on it. I just, it's just, I like the defense. It's just what's crazy to me. Like, you know, we you would think if you're looking at the analytics of it, you would think we would be a better defensive team just because we got so much rim protection with yeah. Khalil Ware in there and, and, and Malik in there and, and, you know, other big guys and stuff like that. But it's just it's just non-existent, bro. And, and you know, you're not going to win on the road. Like, even Wisconsin, I, I don't think they play defense, but you know how it is. I think they felt like they were a better team than us. So why do they really have to play defense when we're going to give up 100 points? You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. So, and, and it is wild because not, Greg Gard has put together a scheme that's like, you know, all of his team comes back. They believe in the system. They believe in the program. And now you're not getting that Wisconsin of, of old where it's 50 For to 55. Sure. I mean, right. the, obviously, they score 91 points. Like, these dudes are all seniors pretty much. Mm -hmm. A.J. Storr is the transfer that comes in, and he's a dominant guard. And, mm -hmm. bro, they're scoring this year. So when you get a team like us who, you know, you can pick holes in our defense. We don't have our full team ready to go. Like ninety one is kind of like seeming like man, it's almost like just another day. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about it, man. Um, like we we wasted our best. That's probably we, we really played. We really played okay offensively. Um, yeah. shout out to Malik Renew. I mean, twelve or twenty one at twenty eight points. I mean, I think he's taking that leap. As far as you know, we always said when we talked about a few episodes ago, I thought he was the guy that was really taking that that guy that we throw the ball into no down doubt. the street. Uh, of the person that we, we could really throw it to and, and go get a bucket. And I think he's took over that role, man. We're just not playing defense defense on the other end. And it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like I can remember scoring 30 against Iowa. We get beat by the same, same thing. We get beat by 20, like coach green, like bro, who cares? Like, you know, like, even though you're happy, you, you, you're seeing some of the fruits of your labor work on the offensive end and stuff like that, bro. In the grand scheme of things, if you don't win, nobody, nobody cares. Yeah. Couldn't care like, less. You know you, you, you know, you could care less about that, man. So I think we just got to figure it out, Derek. I don't know, man. Um, but we're 19 games in, bro. Like, we are who we are at this point, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not – I'm not – I don't I don't have a lot of confidence in this group right now. No. And, and, and you know, we made that comment last episode about going on Twitter. And I don't want to say it's lost because I think people are still going to tune in. But, mm -hmm. you, you oh, know, I – we're gonna always tune in, but absolutely. But I just think there is that dynamic shift of like, man, do I really want to? Do I really want to show up to a game? Am I? Am I, what am I doing supporting these guys if they're gonna give me that? And I don't know who said this. I can't remember who said that. I think it was the guys on the radio, and mm -hmm. they they were talking about 
and and Don had had done his spiel, talked about what he had said, and then he he got off, and the guys on the radio were just talking, and they were like, you know what, I've never been. I've never been a guy who's been a D1 athlete. I've never had the skill. I, I played in high school, and but I dreamed. You know, when you're in mm-hmm. Indiana, you, you dream of putting on that jersey. No and doubt. I think that's – and I don't want to keep saying this, but I, I just find myself doing it, is the fact that, like, when, when, you are at, when you have the backing that you do at Indiana and you just see the product that you're watching right now, everybody is just saying, like, man, I would do anything – to put that jersey on and represent it the right way, and no when you, when you don't see that happen, I think you lose a lot of the fan base. And and you know there are man, I'm I'm in a lot of conversations where you know people are calling in to Scott Dolson and asking what's going on, and you know that's the, that's the thing that there's a beauty and a curse with Indiana basketball. When you it win, is. <laughs> when we win, like we had two bad years, right? But then mm-hmm. when we started winning, we were gods. Right. right. Like we were kings walking around there. But on the flip side of it, when we freshman and sophomore year, I mean, bro, when I was in Maui, I, I've said this on a couple episodes. When I was in Maui, my first year on the coaching staff, I was getting death threats. Like yeah. people were like we the Maui tournament is in Thanksgiving. So you're what? Four games in at that point. Right. Playing right, right. in the Maui tournament. Like I got people emailing me saying like they hope the plane crashes and the whole team <laughs> right. starts from scratch. It's like. That's the yeah. beauty and the curse with Indiana basketball. We yeah, want it no, so bad. No doubt. And you know what I think another thing is there? I mean, I, I listen to Mike Woodson a lot. I listen to his post-game stuff. I listen to his, you know, his radio stuff. He don't really give, like, the fan base, like, what they're looking for, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think sometimes people get so frustrated with his answers of, we just got to get back to work. We just got to get better. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's so it's so vague sometimes to the point where it causes like fans to really like go to Twitter, yeah. um, go to, go to, go to any type of social media. Uh, and you know, you as, as coaches and stuff like that, you want to block out the noise. Like, I know they don't see it. I mean, they lock mm-hmm. in, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, we hear it, you know, and yeah. eventually it, eventually it gets back to where, where it don't need to be. You know, eventually it gets to the players. Eventually it gets to the coach, you yeah. know, the, but, but still like, it's just, he doesn't really give, the fans, um, you know, exactly what they need, bro. Like, and it's just a weird, like, like I know he's like at that age where I just don't think he really, I don't want to say he cares about, I don't think he cares about what other people think, you know? Yeah, right. Like at that, at who he is is who he is. Like, I don't really think he cares about what people think. And I think sometimes that causes a little riff with the fan base, with the fan Absolutely. base. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think being too vague and not like diving into certain questions, just saying, "Yeah, because like, I need bro, to get better. Players need to get better." It's like, well, yeah. Because one thing I do know, <laughs> one thing I do know, like I've been around. Like I grew up in, the, like I grew up in the state of Alabama, right? And you listen to a lot of fans; they don't really know nothing about basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. the, the 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 people that's cheering for it, they don't really know like basketball. Like when I went to Indiana. The fans and the people around, they really are knowledgeable about the game. Like you can't right. just tell them anything and expect them to go with it. Like they gon they gon they gonna do their own homework. They're gonna dive right. into it themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like as if Alabama would do for football. You know what I'm saying? You can't just really tell them, oh, we didn't do this, we didn't go for this right here because of yeah. this. Like you see what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah. when, when Indiana's when like you can't just be like vague with those type of fans because they're gonna go in depth, they're going to do their own homework and have their own, you know, analysis about it. And, you know, they're going to say, well, we, we, every time this lineup, this lineup, this lineup has been in, we've been a negative, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yep. Like they're going to yeah. go into the depths of it sometimes. And I think like Woody just, he don't really care, bro. Some, so, so sometimes that come off as like, he's not the guy for the job. Like what's, it was, what's go ahead. See some of my, no, like it's just, no, I'm just saying, keep going. Like that's all, keep, but keep going. Go ahead. But for me, it, to echo your point, it is crazy because there has been some people that have reached out to me and you to join their podcast to do a show. Right. And, you know, I follow these people that want to reach out and we'll have some interactions. But if right. you watch their Twitter page, bro, there are some of these fans on here that have their own podcast that break down film the way Coach Cream breaks it down. Uh, and, uh, it's wild that they get that invested to this stuff, man. 
Right, no doubt about it. And that's just who we are as a fan. Like, I'm telling you, we want this shit so bad that we're over here. These people are out here breaking down film three or four hours just to show you one clip, and they'll rewind Mm -hmm. it. And it's like, oh, my God, that's what Coach Queen used to do. Like, we just rewind, rewind, rewind. So it it is, man. This isn't just a fan base that you just give them some vague, we need to shoot the ball better. It's like, no, come on, man. Like, be a little more open than that because these fans need it. Right, right, and right. I do. You know what I'm saying? I do feel sorry for CJ Gunn because he was baited. You know what I'm saying? The guy did put yeah. his. He was baited a little bit, man. You know, you don't never want to see that taken outside the game. But bro, we got to be better than that, man. We got to be more disciplined. That, and you know, another opportunity, Derek, coming up. Um, like we said, bro, got Illinois coming up. Going to be on the road. Going to be tough. Just going to be. Just going to be a tough game. Um, they're, they're top ten right now. I think they're rolling. They, I think they play tonight, right? Do Illinois yeah, they play, play tonight? Northwestern at Northwestern? They played Northwestern yeah. tonight. I think they're like a two point, um, two point. They may be a two point favorite against at, uh, against at Northwestern. I think they are. So, yeah, so yeah, that'll be fun to watch, man. Maybe we can learn something from that game. Maybe maybe Northwestern unlocks a, a way to play these guys. You know what I'm saying? But I know we need to be healthy. We need all hands on deck. Hopefully, we get Khalil Ware back. Hopefully, you know. X can get you know continue to get continue yeah. to get better, bro. Continue to continue to get out of his head, man. That's the only way um, things gonna be. But we get like I said earlier. I said the city we got to get him going there. I'm sorry, bro. We yeah, just too you got to. We just we're just too vested in him. You know, we put all our chips to the table to get him to get him back and get him another year. And you know, didn't really recruit certain guards and didn't really get in the portal and go get. We got to. That's what we dealing with. That's what we got. We got to roll with. Yeah. It. Yeah, you got to figure it out here, and I think you're right. I think that having this eight eight game eight game eight day skid where you've got nothing to do but just kind of focus on you, it just makes me think about the time like when we were freshmen and Coach Cream put the chains on the door, wouldn't let us in assembly. I don't think we need to do something like that, but like <laughs> maybe a day or two where guys are just like in sweats, you know, no sweat, just like I don't know five spot shooting like i don't know what it is but you've got a couple of days to get khalil healthy you got a couple mm-hmm. of days to get yourself out of the hole that you're in if you're a xavier mm-hmm. johnson and just get in the film room but see what i've got a crazy stat for you what about crazy, it, what's up what's up crazy stat right now indiana 19 games in with 12 and 7 mm-hmm. last year at this time 12 and 7 well, uh, I mean that's a, that's a great tournament I mean, team last year. We were, we were. You know, I think it. You know, I think that's what they should preach to the to the um to the players. You know, we've been we've been in this situation before. We, we've we, we've lost certain games early on before, and we have a chance to turn this thing around. You know, game by game. Um, and I think you know once guys start holding people accountable, I think. You know, maybe we'll win a game or two when I supposed to win. I think that's what you know. That's all. That's all. It, that's all it takes. Um, you know, for guys to get out of their way, play well, play together, um, and get some enthusiasm, and, and and you know, possibly sneak up on a team and win a game. You know what I'm saying? And maybe we can get the ball rolling from that, man. So yeah. that's what I'm hoping for, bro. But you know, I'm hoping the big fella can come back, come back, and man, give us a lift, bro, because we're gonna need him on the road, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah, and like you said, I think this is a, a a perfect opportunity because in the Big Ten, see, I mean, look at Nebraska, look what they're doing. Like, it only takes one game, especially against a ranked team, to say like, "Holy shit!" Like, we can play yeah. this good every night, right. like, especially right. being on the road. You could sneak one out against Illinois, come home for I think a two game skit. I think you got a two game road schedule and then you're back on the road or home and then yep. you're back on the road. So like it only takes one in the big 10 to get yourself feeling better about yourself. And yeah. then from we, there, if we could, yeah, if we could win this three in a row, we got Iowa and Penn state after this, you know, obviously yeah. take one at a time, but I was, we was a game. I feel like we can win. And I definitely feel like we can win at Penn state at home, man. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this game against Illinois. I know it's going to be big for us, bro. We need it, man. Um, we just got to go out there and execute and get it done, bro. Like we can, we can sit up That's here, good. we can talk about it, we can podcast about it, we can. Everybody can do any, everything. We can have everything laid out, but it, it, you know, it's going, it's going to be the players that go out there and play the game, bro. Yeah, and I think that's what everybody's excited to see. And I don't want to say excited as in like excited, but mm-hmm. I think everybody is kind of wanting to see. Okay, how do we respond? Yeah, I want to see how this. we. Re- 
Yeah, I want to see how we respond after eight days off. Yeah. Are we going to look like the same team or are we going to look like a totally different team? Right. You know, because I, I think that's long enough to really change. That's long enough. That's enough practice days in between to really change, like, you know, certain things on uh, to where you could look like a totally different team. You know what I'm right. saying? Like eight days in the season. I don't know. I don't know how we got that lucky to really get that break. I know, the, <laughs> I know the players probably hate they got that. You know, like think oh, about yeah. how we would feel. We got eight days. You know, we would be. <laughs> oh, I'd be <laughs> begging be, to play somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. But we would be sick. Like, literally, like, <laughs> we would be sick. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, but if you want to win, uh, and I think that's where that's that was the point where we got to Derek when we got older when we became juniors and seniors we wanted to win that bad so we were willing to do whatever it took to win you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. when you really want to win you will make those type of sacrifices that that it takes to win and I think you know hopefully we hopefully guys are coming to grips hopefully guys are watching a lot of film and able to break down and figure out what we need to do in order to get back on the, the right side of things. That's the whole point. See, it's like, do you have time now with these eight days to really get these guys together, get these older guys involved and just say like, hey, I don't know. Uh, Archie used to put this together where he would just show even Coach Cream would just show like film of just the bad. And I don't, maybe it was a mind game to embarrass us, but it was all just to sit down and be like, is this the shit you guys want to show to the world? To this fan right. base, like the Coach right. Queen used to always say this, like there are fans in the stands that this might be their only opportunity to see Indiana basketball. Is this what you want to show them? Right. And I don't know about you, but like when you think of it like that, you're just like, okay, damn, like that hits home. That hits right. home really right. hard. So I don't know. I don't know. Are they mature enough to be saying that, or are they? Are they? Or maybe they, you know, it's it's all different type of approaches they could take. Maybe them. Maybe those guys need confidence. Maybe they need a highlight tape. I mean, we used to get highlight tapes and. Yeah. This is who we were before, and this is what type of team we – This is we are the same team of when we play well together and those type of games. And sometimes you may need to, you know, see who you really are as a team, like just, just to get back and remember what it was like playing when we were right. winning, when we were playing right. together. Things were fun and everything, you know. So, I'm, so it's a lot of different ways. I'm not at the practices. I'm not inside the locker room, so I don't know what those guys specifically need. You know what I'm saying? But right. uh, hopefully the coaching staff getting it done, man. Um, I think that about concludes the episode, Derek. It's been fun, man. You know, anytime we get on here and talk, it's been Absolutely. fun, man. I think episode eight, Ball from Assembly Hall, we out. We out. <laughs>